And finally, new rule, the people of planet Earth have to ask... <laughs> have to a ask themselves one question. Why did we put this guy in charge? <laughs> Is he even one of us, a human? He... He looks like a first attempt at whittling a puppet. And why is the world's most socially awkward person in charge of social media? <laughs> you can't watch the news these days without seeing some story about Facebook, hosting Russian bots, selling user data, getting into cryptocurrency, refusing to fact-check political ads. And it keeps growing. You know, after we found out last year that Facebook had wrongly given out the personal information of 50 million people, there was a big backlash in a, a movement called Hashtag Delete Facebook. Well, it hashtag didn't fucking work. <laughs> Facebook has only gotten bigger, and let's face it, social media is where the world increasingly gets its news. So maybe... Now would be a good time to remember how the whole thing got started, and it wasn't because Mark Zuckerberg had a calling to birth a world with a more informed populace. It's because he started a website that gave college dudes the chance to rate women whose pictures he hacked from Harvard's data bank. Yes, the most powerful man in the news business got there by inventing a hot or not site. <laughs> and when you look at the world of likes that Facebook has spawned, look at this post from Quora. My Facebook photos don't get as many likes as other people's. Does that mean I'm ugly? You have to ask, has it changed that much? <laughs> of course, on the bright side, Facebook has solved many crimes, like the ones where the genius thieves post pictures of the heist. <laughs> because that's what Facebook does, too. It makes you stupider because there are only so many hours in a day and you can get only so much accomplished if you are constantly checking to see what everybody you ever met had for lunch. <laughs> People are dumber because they read less. Facebook should be called Time Suck. <laughs> And now Zuckerberg has decided Facebook will not be policing political speech on their site or fact-checking any political ads. And this only applies to politics. Other stuff still has rules. On Facebook, you cannot say, Pizza Hut murders puppies and puts it in the sauce. <laughs> but you can say, Pizza Hut murders puppies and puts it in the sauce on orders from Bernie Sanders. <laughs> and I hate to tell you, but that's the way it should be. Do you want political speech policed by the accuracy regulation departments at Facebook and Twitter? Not me. I'm always going to come down on the side of free speech, the parameters of which have been debated for centuries by our finest legal minds, and also Clarence Thomas. <laughs> And figuring out when politicians are full of shit is the responsibility of the voters and no one else. People have to build up an immunity to falsehoods. We can't pass the buck to a referee because a referee is still human. And even if we used a computer to do it, Trump would say the computer was an angry Democrat. <laughs> there is another solution. Don't use Facebook at all. I never got the... I never got the, the whole point of staying in touch with so many people I don't really care about. <laughs> Maybe because I grew up on classic rock where the songs were always about moving on. <laughs> Papa was a Rolling Stone. <laughs> Freebird, Ramblin' Man, Go Your Own Way. Now no one moves on. Why? You don't need to follow Gary from high school who was your lab partner in chem class. <laughs> You forgot Cam, you can forget him. <laughs> you don't need his status update. His status is he never left town. <laughs> and guess what? Because of Facebook, you haven't either. Just remember, not everyone you've ever crossed paths with is meant to be in your consciousness forever. Some people come into your life, touch you, and then leave. They're called scoutmasters. All right. <laughs>